Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following me on my journey. Some people have asked for more crab and more turntable, so here we go. I think this pen deserves that type of treatment. And the light plays across it, and as it rotates around, it's a very attractive pen. This is the New Moon Man C2. They certainly are into alphanumeric models. And, you know, there was the M2, which we're going to compare it to. There was a uh, Lakai. So we'll take a look at how Moon Man has evolved their small, translucent, or sometimes crystal clear transparent pocket pens. And the C1 to me is still an amazing pen. So we'll also conclude that in the comparison. So we're going to wait for the frog to come around and let him wink at you. And then we'll dive into the details, see how this pen is made and put together. This is the Moon Man pen completely disassembled. And it was very easy to take it apart. All the parts are machined well, fit together well. Much to my surprise, there are three O-rings in this design. Yeah, this is that nib collar, nib assembly. You can see it's keyed, so the feet only fits in one way. It's flat on the bottom here. And this is that... Uh, to me, excellent number six Moon Man nib. They're not really marked, but I would call them all fines. I think it'd be great if they came out with medium and broads, but we'll see. Maybe a stub. But Chinese pens don't seem to be, at least uh, from my experience, become made with that. What's really, I think, done very, very well is this section. If you look inside there, there's a rubber O-ring that this nib assembly, when it screws in, seats up against that rubber O-ring. So that's the number two. And number three is this O-ring here at the top of the section as it screws into the barrel. And obviously all these O-rings are going to get a nice little coat of silicone grease on them. So this acrylic is nicely done. You know that I like the blue. I like the way it kind of bends the light around. And those grooves machined into the barrel to me match up to the grooves machined into the cap where the bottom of the section screws into. So I like the design from that perspective. And one reviewer kind of said that they uh, didn't, weren't that original in this design, but I think they did a nice job of, of things that are quite unique in this pen. And all pens, if you want to really look at them, share some similar visual attributes and maybe some similar features, but a pen's a pen. And to me, I like to focus on the pen that I have in my hand, not the pen that I don't have in my hand. So, now a little editorial comments there. So at the end of the day, I just find this pen to be very well made again, good engineering, which obviously is, is a focus of mine. So let's compare this to some other recent Moon Men's. And then I got to decide on an ink to go in here. I think it's going to be Robert Oster Soda Pop Blue because that's one of my poppier blues. I put the C2 here in comparison to other Moon Man pens. This is the, uh, I'd say, the original of this series, the Lakai, which came and went very quickly. I had a number of viewers who were disappointed that they missed out on it. But you'll notice the cap is very similar, except the threads are in a different spot. But they both have a frosted section here in the cap that covers the frosted section, or the section in, in the pen. And then, of course, the barrel is... You know, here it has those nice rings in it, and then here it's clear and straight. So after the Lakai came the Moon Man M1, 
And the first version just came with a red ring here. And these are all number five nibs in these three pens. So then they made a slight revision to it and put an anodized aluminum section here. And then this ring here matched the color of the section. It came in a couple different colors. I chose green at the time I bought it because that's the mood I was in. And then to me, the most impressive pen of this series is the C1, which you can see from the size dwarfs these other pens, not necessarily in length, but definitely in girth and definitely in ink capacity. And it also has that great number six Moomin nib, which also the C2 has. So the C series, at least for the time being, has that number six nib. One of the things that you need to be aware of if you do try to purchase the C2 is it comes with a silver nib, which is a number six nib, or a gold nib, which is a number five. And Bobby on Etsy, as we see here, illustrates that very clearly. But some of the other sellers just have you select between a gold and, and a silver nib, and you may not be aware that they're two different sizes. The C2, unlike these other pens also come in a number of different colors. I think the Moon Man uh, wanted to do a couple different things with this model. Number one, a lower price point, but still get maintain the option of that number six nib. And for some reason, give people an option of a number five nib and also to give an option of colors. And, and here's a nice uh, picture from the web of the colors that the C2 is available in. Here are uh, the three Moon Man, that I would compare, posted. The C2 is the shortest of the group. The Lakai is second, and the M2 is certainly a much longer pen posted. But where the real difference comes in is the section and nib. Let's zoom in. Here we'll find what I believe is the drawback to the C2 is this is a relatively short section. It's in very aggressive curved hourglass shape. Pretty good sharp step up here. So you're really forced into holding the pen right here. There's a nice big number six nib there, but I'm not a fan of sections that force your fingers into one particular spot. I like to move around while I write and this um, makes it more tiresome for me to write long sessions with this type of design. The Lakai is, is nice and a little bit of a flare out at the end. This is not that much bigger than the C2, but the, the shape and design make it easier to hold and you can hold this anywhere. There's no um, restrictions on where you put your fingers. And if you look at the M2, that's the widest section of the group. It's a straight through, no little turn up at the end. It also has a pretty decent step up here. But, you know, it's well away from where you're holding it. You know, it's about the same distance from the end of the nib as the C2, but I just find this more comfortable, and the and this C2 is the least comfortable of these pens to hold. And yes, I have replaced the nibs in these two pens, and they write great, and I enjoy them. They've been inked up since I got them. Another distinction is the feed. The Kai had a clear feed on it, which works great, but when they went to the M2 and obviously the other ones, they went to a, a standard black feed. Not certain why they changed. I mean, I think a clear feed and a clear pen like this certainly aesthetically looks better. And I haven't noticed any advantage or disadvantage to ink flow from um, any of these feeds. They all work well. My one comment would be, based on economy of scale, is there's probably you know, billions of these black feeds available. So uh, the cost per unit is probably much lower than the clear feeds, which are not as popular, at least from the amount of Chinese pens that use them. <clears throat> as I mentioned, we're going to put soda pop blue in there. I was able to buy this big bottle uh, direct from the website inkart.ink. So... Nice place if you want to get a bunch of Robert Oster inks. The shipping is not inexpensive, so buying a bunch is the way to go, or maybe do a group buy. One of the challenges of these bottles is the ink is low. So that's why I have my hypodermic needle here, which has a very long needle. 
which can easily fit into the bottom and we can draw up a fair amount of ink. Let's see how much ink the C2 will handle. So some viewers have asked on how do you fill an eyedropper, which I thought was pretty self-explanatory, but you take the pen, you unscrew the section. Like I said, it's a nice O-ring there, but I still just put a little silicone on grease on there. It just makes it go together easier and certainly stops even any ink flow that might happen. So we're going to insert this syringe full of ink into the barrel and gently depress it to fill up it with ink. And I generally fill it up to where the threads start. Some people talked about filling it up even further, so it fills the feed and section quicker. And then you just screw this back on. The threads are nice and coarse and, and uh, well, not real coarse, but they're, they work well so you don't cross thread it. And you can see that's a pretty full ink. And it took about two milliliters, maybe a little bit more. So that's a decent fill. So we're going to give time for the ink to saturate the feed, get down to the nib, and we'll see how this nib performs. I have big expectations based on my previous experiences, and it will roll away if you don't be careful, but it does look good with that blue ink in it. So now we come to that all-important point, writing. So this is a pen on the small side. It takes about two turns to get the cap off, which is a little bit more than you'd expect. But these threads here at the end are fine. You don't even feel them. Um, I don't find it comfortable in the hand without posting. It's just a little small a little on the light side. We'll give you those weights. It posts deep and it posts securely. It's not coming off. Um, the next thing that I notice right away is this section is not to my liking because of the strong curved shape to it. Kind of forces your finger into this spot right here. It's not that thin, but um, it's certainly on the thin side of what I'm comfortable with. So overall, I think you can hear that the nib is smooth. But it just has a sweet spot, at least the way that I use it. You may have seen it was a little bit of a hard start here in the beginning because it's just sensitive to that angle. It's also sensitive to pressure. And this is a little bit more than I'm used to with the other Silver Moon Man number no. 6 nibs that I have. The one in the C1 I think is excellent. It's just easier to write with than this one. The one in the wood M6 is nicer. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. So we come time now to rate this pen. I've had a viewer say that I've been rating pens too high, and I have to admit that there's some validity to that comment. So we're going to give this an 8.3. And it'll get one check for construction. But design-wise, I'm not a fan of the way that they did this section. I think those threads at the end are an excellent idea. You know, they've been around in vintage pens from the 20s. It's just not been a popular design for whatever reason. Franklin Christoph puts that on some of their models, but they use more of a block thread than this design. And the nib just doesn't live up to my expectations. So I think we need to just take a look at some other nibs I've put in similar pens just to compare writing. So this is the Lakai, the original pen that started this whole series. 
And I have a glitter purple in here from Pen BBS. It's been in here for a while. Be nice if I spelled right. So this is one of my favorite nibs is a oblique double broad Knox. And it, it works well with this ink. I'm very happy with it. Um, the consistently nice flow. And this ink has been in there for a while and it still writes first time every time, which is not a trait of every pen, but certainly one that makes the pen more of a pleasure to use. Here's a 1.1 stub in a Lakai. You can see a, a theme there. And this is a purple glitter ink. The ink up here was the pearl ink, which is a kind of a gray glitter ink. I mean, this nib is super smooth. It's a pleasure to write with. It's not a sharp stub. It's kind of rounded, so you don't get as much of a crisp line variation as you would with a sharper nib like the Lamy 1.1 stub nib is sharper. But it certainly works well in this pen, and it shows off the ink fairly well. Yes, this is the Moon Man uh, fine nib. I got a spare one from Bobby, that Frostfire Pen BBS 352, which every time I put this pen in my hand, I like the way that it feels. And this is just a little smoother, a little wetter than the nib that was in the C2. It still requires pressure to write and it still has a somewhat of a sweet spot, but not as demanding as the nib on the C2. So we're coming to the end. So thank you for watching. As my handwriting degrades, uh, trying to get to the bottom of the paper with the tripod in the way. I mean, overall, I think this pen is a nice pen, but it doesn't hit it out of the ballpark for me. Um, certain things in the design, like this sharp edge here, which the M2 has the same step up, but it, it's not as sharp. It has that metal ring there. And it's a little bit rounded, and it wouldn't have hurt them to round it. The way the cap blends in when it's capped is very nice, but they missed the boat on that design part. So may you have many great writing experiences. Enjoy putting ink on paper. Find a nice combination of a pen with a nib and an ink and a paper that you like and, and go to town. So this is the end of this video for now. We're going to say bye until the next video. Enjoy every day.